All right, I have a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of clients that come to me and ask me how to help them bridle a troubled horse or bridle their going horse that maybe is a little resistant to the bridle. How to make it easier for their horse? How to, you know, just just a a safety end on bridling, and then also being as kind and and as as soft to our horse as possible. Um, so this is how I bridle when I start bridling, whether it's a troubled horse for the first time putting a bridle on or a colt for the first time bridling. I'm going to start, I'm gonna check them out here, put my hand on their nose, put my hand on their jaw. I'm gonna roll their jaw back and forth. Just a little roll back and forth here. Now, if my horse was real resistant to this, if if I went to roll his jaw one direction or the other, or my my hand on the bridge of his nose here, if he was resistant to that, and he or she threw a fit, you know, got real worried when I put my hand here and started this, I wouldn't even attempt to go to the bridle. I wouldn't even start. I would get this good beforehand. Then from there, whether again, it's a troubled horse or a colt for the first bridling. I will bridle with my lead rope. I won't go straight to the snapple until I've messed in their mouth a little bit with the lead rope. Take the lead rope over their neck. Bring their nose to the side. Here with his nose to the side. If he was worried and gonna, gonna fuss around quite a bit with my head off kilter and out of the line of fire, that's gonna be my safest safest area here is off to the side. I'm not gonna take and put my arm over his head and try to lower lower him down like that. I see that a lot of times. That's a real a real pressure point to a lot of horses. You can teach them to do anything, but if you're working with one that's already troubled, already having bridling issues, let's let's make it a little bit easier for them. So lead rope over bring it down. I'm going to bridle them just like I would with the snaffle with the lead rope. When I put my finger in the mouth to get the snaffle or to get the rope in the mouth, I'm not going to pry down on their, their gum there. I'm just going to massage just a little bit. They'll open their mouth. Here he's not too worried. I'm going to let it come back out. So I'm going to massage the gum a little bit. There's the rope in his mouth. Let him play with that for just a second. Drop it back out. Now from there, my horse is ready to bridle. I can tell he's pretty calm, not too worried. We're gonna go to the bridle. Now I'm gonna bridle the first time with the halter on. And maybe if it's a real troubled horse, I'm gonna bridle him a long time with the halter on because I wanna be able to bring his nose to the side and I wanna be able to get a hold pretty quickly if I need to, if my horse is worried. I don't wanna be fussing around with the, the bridle up here chasing his nose. I can grab that halter knot pretty quickly. If it got real bad, I could grab the lead rope pretty quickly. But I'm gonna take the bridle here, go here. Again, I'm not going there. I'm gonna go here. That's less busy to a horse. that in there, massage his gums, let him pick the bit up, don't cram it in his mouth. A lot of times when we're working with a hard to bridle horse, you might have to sit there and massage his gum for a little while. Oh well. Here, over the ear, if this is a tough to bridle horse, gives me a lot of trouble. I'm not going to go to the next ear from this side because I need his nose around and if I'm reaching over top of his head again, I'm in the line of fire. So I'm going to step to the other side reposition his head over here. Try not to wad his ears up to put that bridle on. Back over, get everything right. His nose back around. Now, I'll do that maybe a handful of times before I'm even thinking we're going on to, 
to the next step. But once they're pretty good here, then I need to take the halter off because I don't want to ride him around with his halter on. I don't have to unbridle my horse to take the halter off. I'm gonna drop that down. If I have a rope halter, it works with a web halter too, but it's a little harder to do. That is gonna come into his mouth, over the bit, under the bit, back out. Now I'm ready to go. Now, if my horse is, again, a troubled horse has a hard time to bridle, the, br the halter is gonna go back on before I take the bridle off. So if I have a trail ride, I'm done riding, take the nose band under the chin strap, back into the mouth, comes off the same way it went, just backwards. Over. So then I get a lot of questions from people saying, well, you know, putting the rope through his mouth and everything like that, the halter through his mouth. My horse wouldn't let me do that because I'd be, you know, poking around in his mouth too much. The more times that we can be in their mouth with the bit, with the halter, back and forth, taking it off, the, the more steady they're going to get with, with this, the, the less worried about it they're going to get. Now, if I was harsh, quick, jabbing, then yeah, he's not gonna like me around his mouth at all. I'm not gonna take my hands and I'm not gonna, you know, stick it in every little hole that he's got here, mess with him a whole bunch there, but I'm gonna go about my business being in there doing what, what I need to do. Take it off, bring his nose back around, let him spit the bit out. Drop down real slow. There we go.